Welcome back to the RAS, ACS, and Behind the Knife Journal Club on Landmark Papers in Surgery. I'm Shivani Bajpai, a general surgery resident from the Anne Arundel Medical Center, and I will be briefly reviewing the American Association for the Surgery of Trauma Multi-Institutional Analysis of Pancreatic Trauma, determining CT accuracy in diagnosing pancreatic injury and the morbidity and mortality associated with varying operative strategies. Pancreatic trauma, though rare, is known to have high morbidity and mortality. Clinical and radiographic evidence assists in the diagnosis of pancreatic injury, which is then assigned a grade by the AAST classification system. However, the retroperitoneal location of the pancreas make clinical and radiographical evaluation difficult. And at this time, consensus regarding the indications for resection and or drainage and endoscopic stenting are still evolving. So, the patients who do not require immediate laparotomy risk delayed diagnosis and perhaps additional complications due to the variability in interventions. This is a retrospective multi-center study that measures the accuracy of CT scans in the diagnosis of pancreatic injury, as well as outcomes related to treatments for higher grade injuries. This is a retrospective multi-institutional study that reviewed 704 traumatic pancreatic injuries from January 2005 to December 2012. These patients were greater than 18 years old, survived greater than 48 hours after injury, had no history of pancreatic surgery, and were admitted with blunt or penetrating trauma with injury to the pancreas. The grade of the pancreatic injury was defined by operative report description whenever available, but otherwise was based upon radiographic data. Patients were stratified by those who underwent emergent laparotomy versus non-operative management, as well as stratified by injury grade. Mortality, ARDS, organ space infection, and pseudocyst or pancreatic fistula formation were analyzed using multivariate logistic regression analysis. Outcomes for grades 3, 4, and 5 injuries were analyzed separately. There were 704 pancreatic trauma patients, of whom 585, or about 83%, underwent laparotomy. Overall, the mortality rate was similar between the two management groups, around 7.5%. The operative group was younger, predominantly male, had a higher incidence of penetrating injury, had an increased need for packed red blood cells, had a higher pancreatic grade injury, and had a lower systolic blood pressure on admission compared with the non-operative group. The primary diagnostic modality for ductal injury was surgery followed by a CT scan. There were 182 patients with a ductal injury diagnosed at surgery, and of those diagnosed at surgery, 61 had preoperative CT scans. The CT scan correctly identified nearly 80% of the ductal injuries, whereas 13 patients were incorrectly classified to have no ductal injury. Nine of those 13 patients actually had a grade 3 injury, and one had a grade 4 injury. Therefore, CT had a sensitivity of nearly 80% and a specificity of about 62% in classifying main pancreatic ductal injury. There were several variables studied in the prediction of outcomes. In a multivariate analysis, the independent predictors of mortality were increasing age, increased injury severity score, lower systolic blood pressure on admission, elevated heart rate on admission, elevated lactate, and the need for a blood transfusion. The independent predictors of ARDS were increasing age, increased injury severity score, decreased GCS score, increased lactate, the need for a blood transfusion, and the development of a pancreatic fistula. Of note, a higher penetrating abdominal trauma index was associated with higher incidence of ARDS. Penetrating injury, as well as combining oversewing and stapling of the pancreas, was associated with a higher rate of pancreatic fistula or pseudocyst formation. Among grade three injuries, independent predictors for the development of pseudocyst or pancreatic fistula were elevated heart rate and postoperative bleeding. Stapling the transected end of the pancreas was protective against the development of a pseudocyst or pancreatic fistula, 
versus over sewing or a duct stitch. Grade three injuries were most frequently managed by distal pancreatectomy. Grade four injuries were most frequently managed by wide external drainage and most grade five injuries underwent a Whipple procedure. There was not a significant difference in mortality rate between the grade three injuries managed by distal pancreatectomy versus those without resection, but mortality was higher in the grade three injuries which were not resected. In grade three injuries undergoing distal pancreatectomy, the pancreatic stump was stapled nearly 40% of the time. Comparing those who had their pancreas stapled as opposed to sewn or over sewn, there were no significant differences in preoperative factors. In conclusion, the sensitivity and specificity of CT scans to diagnose a main pancreatic ductal injury remains suboptimal. Given that fistula formation is associated with ARDS, this study suggests that stapling is the best way to manage the transected end of grade 3 injuries, as this may reduce the risk of ARDS. Resection was associated with lower mortality and similar pancreas-related complication rates compared with those managed without resection in grade 3 injuries. Operative management of grade 3 injuries should include resection and stapling of the remnant. Regarding the limitations of the study, this is a multi-center and retrospective study, meaning it's heavily reliant on chart review and the available objective measurements. Additionally, patient care, documentation, and decision-making were not standardized, so there may be some unaddressed confounding variables. For example, pancreatic fistulas in this study were diagnosed by the provider's assessments and clinical judgment. Of note, all patients in this study were evaluated in the context of trauma, where pancreatic edema and perfusion are likely influencing closure durability. This is not a limitation so much as a consideration when comparing this study to the outstanding research available regarding the management of pancreatic resection in an elective setting. For example, the DISPAC trial that randomized over 350 elective distal pancreatectomies to stapled versus sewing of the stump showed no difference in pancreatic fistula rate between the two groups. These results are in sharp contrast to the results of this study that cover traumatic pancreatectomies. I'm Shivani Bajpai, a general surgery resident at the Anne Arundel Medical Center. If you have any questions or comments, you can reach me by email. Please review this content on This Week in SCORE modules on duodenal and pancreatic injury. Thanks for listening!